2,000 years after the departure of Jesus the Christ. The prophets are back to teach the real Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel, their true nationality. This is their campaign. Well, remember, sis, the history of the Ankh. Let me show you something, all right? Go to uh, Exodus 20. Exodus 20. Right. The Ankh is an idol. The cross is an idol. Remember, that's from Egypt. Now, remember, historically, our people, we came out of Egypt. Now, you said the, the history of the Ankh comes before the scriptures. Right. That's not true. The scriptures started first. Remember, Genesis is what? The beginning. No, it's not corrupted. No. no. Right. The text that we have access to. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you the history of what happened. There are certain books we don't have anymore. That's true. But it hasn't been corrupted. I want to show you something real quick about the history of that. One moment. Ruth. Go to Exodus 20, verse 2. Exodus 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage. So Egypt represented the house of bondage. Now look at this, read on, watch this now. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. When the Israelites came out of Egypt, why would God have to tell the Israelites, don't have any other gods before me? Why? Because in Egypt, our people learned what? All the gods of Egypt. Read on. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve. Why? Because all of this is what we were doing in Egypt. Why was there a law on a man having to grow a beard? Because what was a custom famous in Egypt? Bald head and shaved faces. So. What the Most High did was, if you examine God's laws, they're in contrary to what was going on in Egypt. That's right. Now go to Habakkuk 2.18. Now the crucifix or the ark. The ark, the crucifix comes from the ark. It's the same thing. It goes back to idolatry. Remember, the ark represents procreation, sex. It, re it represents a penis. If you look at the Vatican, it's the same thing. If you look at the Vatican from a bird's eye view, it's the same thing. Watch this. Listen. Habakkuk 218. What profited the graven image? The Bible says, what profit is there in the graven image? Come on. That the maker thereof have graven it. That the maker thereof have graven it. Because remember, they have to make the image. Come on. The molten image. The molten why? Because they melt it down. And a teacher of lies. God says, what comes with that graven image? A teacher of lies. Why? Because that person is going to try to justify why they're supposed to wear it. You understand what I'm saying? Now I want to show you something. The cross of all churches, what do they have? They have a cross. All churches have a cross. I want to show you something about the cross. The cross is of the devil. The cross is of the devil. The, remember, remember, the cross was in Egypt. How would that have anything to do with Jesus Christ? Nothing. Go to Matthew chapter 10 where he says, take up your cross and follow me. People think that means the cross. It don't mean the cross. Matthew 10 and verse 27, 28. Is that it? Come on. Matthew 10 verse 27. When I tell you in darkness, that seek speak ye in light, and what ye have heard in the ear, 
Now preach ye upon the housetop. Now I want to show you because it's our job to whatever is in secret is to make public. What's in secret now is that blacks and Hispanics are the Israelites. A lot of people don't know that. It's our job to declare that publicly. So we go into the streets. Now, I got it. Okay, read it. Matthew 10 verse 38. And he that taketh not his cross. And he that taketh not his cross. There you go. There you go. See, you're a smart sister. <laughs> you be reading, but that's what it is. Some sisters think, or some brothers think, that means the crucifix. That's talking about your burden. Exactly. So now, what is your job now? Deuteronomy 10 and 12. What is your job now as an Israelite woman? What's your role? Let's find out. How do you find a good husband? He has to be in these laws. Why? Because that's what's going to keep the family together. Man, and remember, Christ, the Bible says, can two walk together except they be agreed? Exactly, exactly. So how are you going to find that good man? He got to be in this. He has to fear God. Listen to the scripture. Deuteronomy 10 verse 12. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? What's your name again? Catherine. You got to ask yourself the same thing. The Bible is asking us, what does the Lord our God require of us? Come on. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. To serve him with all our heart and with all our soul. Now I'm going to give you an example of that. First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. The Bible says a woman shouldn't wear pants, right? So what do women wear? Here it is. First Timothy 2 and 9. And like men are also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. In modest apparel. So what are they to wear? Dresses, skirts, covering themselves up. This Bible is about repentance, changing. That's when you're going to find a good husband. you got to seek the Lord first. Read it again. And like men are also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. With shamefacedness and sobriety. You know what shamefacedness means, Catherine? She should be. Say it again. No, no, not makeup. You can wear makeup. That's not, it's not a sin to wear makeup. See, that's Jehovah's Witness. They teach a woman is not supposed to wear makeup. But there's no sin that says a woman, that it, there's no scripture that says it's a sin for a woman to wear makeup. I want to show you some. Keep going. With shamefacedness. Shamefacedness means shy. A black and Latin woman shy. No. <laughs> That's our sisters. That's what the Bible says. Sharing faceness meaning shy. Come on. And sobriety. Sobriety means sober mind. Clear minded. Not getting drunk. Not getting high. Catherine, not smoking weed. All praises to the most high. Come on. That's not with braided hair. Now that's how you know these are sisters. Not with what? Braided hair. Which woman has braids? The black and Latin woman. That's the culture of our people. Come on. Or gold. Or pearls or cross the array. Now that's the scripture. That's the part where a lot of traditional Christians say, oh, see, you're not allowed to wear gold or pearls or cross the array. I'm going to show you that that's not what that's talking about. Get Ezekiel chapter 16. This is the scripture that shows you that our sisters and the brothers, we were known for our apparel. Right. Ezekiel chapter 16. You know what I want? Thank you. Ezekiel 16 verse 14. And thou right now. And thou right now. Thou right now. Start at verse 10. That's what I want. Yes. Verse 10. I clothe thee also with braided work. God says, I. I clothe thee with braided work. Come on. And shod thee with badger skin. Come on. And I girded thee about with fine linen. With fine linen. This is God telling Ezekiel how he decked Israel. Come on. And I covered thee with silk. With silk. I decked thee also with ornaments. And I put bracelets upon thy hand. Bracelets upon thy hand. Come on. And a chain on thy neck. And chain. So we had jewelry. This is the scripture that shows God gave us jewelry. He wanted us to look fashionable. Come on. And they put a jewel on their forehead. So who do you see today that put jewelry on their forehead? The Hindus or East Indians, they got that from our sisters. That was an Israelite custom. 
How do we know that? Because God says, I did this to you. A lot of these other nations, they saw the culture of the Israelites and they took it. So there's nothing wrong with putting jewelry on your forehead. You ain't East Indian. That's what your foremothers did. Come on. And earrings in thine ears. So you can wear earrings, just not the ones with the cross on it. <laughs> you can wear earrings, but not the ones with the cross on it. Why? Because that what that symbolizes Egypt. Right. That was what Egypt did. It symbolized sex. Yeah. That unk is an upside down cross with a little circle at the end. Christianity just took the circle out and left it straight. Come on. And a beautiful crown upon thy head. And we had clouds. Come on. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and the raiment was a fine linen, Come on. and silk, and broidered work. Come on. Thou didst eat fine flour, Come on. and honey, and oil, and thou was exceedingly beautiful. What did God say about the black and Hispanic woman? Was exceedingly beautiful. God says you were exceedingly beautiful. But what happened, Catherine? TV. It got in our brains where we think, oh, I must have blonde hair or blue eyes. No, you wear the natural hair because that's the hair Christ had. Christ had woolly hair. Christ had woolly hair. Listen, come on. And our renown went forth among the heathen. And our renown, our reputation went forth among the heathen. So the other nations knew the Israelites, these people are bad. They know how to dress. Come on. For thy beauty, for it was perfect through my coming. So this is the process of you changing as that sister. Get so 1929, drop that. This is the process. It's putting away the idols. It, you go to church? Okay, you stop going to church? All praises. Okay, you've been watching for a while. When you were 12? Really? In a Hispanic household? In an Indian household? Oh, Native American. Okay, right. Father's Native American and your mother is what? Okay, 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 okay. So your dad's Colombian. Lumbi Indian. Wow. Wow, so then that means you're from the tribe of Gad. That's right. That means you're from the tribe of Gad. Listen, where we at? Listen to the scripture, Catherine. Surah 19, verse 29. A man may be known by his look, and one that hath understanding by his countenance. Watch this. When thou meetest him, a man's attire. The way a man or woman dresses, God says, an excessive laughter, what comes out of his or her mouth, and gait, the way he or she walks, show what he is. It shows your character. Guess what? We don't need organizations to go into our community and teach that. The Bible teaches that. There's a certain woman, a certain way a woman should sit. There's a certain way, guess what? God says a woman should speak to a man. Catherine, you heard that? There's a certain woman, uh, uh, there's a certain way a woman is supposed to speak to a man. Our sisters have to learn that. Exactly. This one's to, give me Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. Catherine, I hope you understand that if you want that righteous husband and you want God to deal with your life, you got to repent. When I came into the truth, I said, you know what, I want a wife. I prayed for a wife. But I had to be patient, finally got a wife that keeps the commandments. So it's the same with you. You got to change your life and be that example, and then the Most High is going to send you that man that's going to keep God's laws. Proverbs 31, and this is what I want. I want verse, hold on, verse 11, I believe. Yes, 10. Proverbs 31, verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? That's supposed to be the question on the black and Latin woman. How to be virtuous. How to be respectful. How to have brains. A lot of our sisters are what? Known for being rude? Disrespectful. Why? Because they learned that from TV. A lot of these other women, they respect them. Say it again. That's right. That's right. And that's what TV perpetuates is you know what? A lot of sisters, you know what they say? I'm a strong black woman. I'm an independent woman. What does that mean, Catherine? I'm an independent woman. There you go. There you go. Don't a lot of sisters 
say that, brothers? A lot of sisters say, I'm a strong black woman. I'm an independent woman. And then our sister did the famous, the famous song. Um, single ladies. Single ladies. Hey, there's another uh, song called Girls Run the World. Oh my God. You know what that's called? Blasphemy. Girls don't run the world. The Most High God runs the world. That's right. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.